Hey everybody, this is Diabetic Daddy 76 here with a video tutorial on how to make a camera mount for your bow. Now I see a lot of homemade camera mount videos on YouTube, but I don't see any how-to videos. And I figure some people would like to learn how to do this without spending, say, 40 to 70 dollars for a camera mount. And as you will see here later on, this is a pretty decent mount considering every single mount I've ever seen has the same issues with vibration as well as audio. So what I'm going to do is just show you how I made this camera mount. First what I did is I took two pieces of bent steel, the kind you use for putting together a fence, sit in the corners and bolt that in. I have a large one and I have a medium sized one. And then I would show you the individual piece, but I used my last one. I also have a straight piece. It's got four holes in it. So what I did is I took the straight piece and I attached it to the larger 90 degree piece. In between that I put a piece of that foam adhesive so it gives it a nice little bushing in between the two pieces of metal and then I bolted those together. I used just two bolts, two lock washers, and then I trimmed that down. And the reason I did that is because this is going to go over my stabilizer on the bow. And if I kept these two holes, it was just too long. This would have been too much. So what I did is I trimmed it just below this bolt. And so that way if I want to, I can mount my camera right on top of my stabilizer running straight out in front of it or I can mount it to the side which is how I've opted to do with this one then what I did after bolting that is I attached the smaller piece of bent metal here again I trimmed it down to where you just had the one hole there and then I used a rubber washer if you can see here right there in the middle and then I bolted that also with a lock washer and then I basically had everything in place I filed everything down by the way you don't want sharp edges so I filed everything down then I trimmed the bolts and I used the magical ba -ba -ba -ba, JB Weld I mixed a little batch of the JB Weld and I placed it over the nuts and the washers as you can see there, I filled in any seams, unseemly seams, get it? <laughs> and then I also ran along the side, and, and here if you can see this JB Weld job I did along the side here, that's actually where that styrofoam adhesive is in between there. Now when I bolted it together, of course that styrofoam clinched real tight. And the reason I used the styrofoam and the uh, rubber washers the reason I did that is because every time I see videos on these camera mounts when someone shoots there's a lot of vibration so what I'm trying to do is actually minimize that vibration by putting shock absorbers in between pieces of metal then what I did is I actually dissected a tabletop camera tripod those are one of those little three to four inch tripods you can put on a table really good for a little quick shoot photography I took the bolt out of that and I fed it through one of the holes on the last piece of bent metal and then I put another rubber washer on there. The reason I did that is twofold. Number one, the rubber washer actually keeps that bolt in place. Number two, it acts as a bushing for the camera so when I shoot again it's another area to absorb the shock. And then the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this because this is, as you can tell, bright shiny steel and I need it to match the environment around me so I'm going to paint it to the camouflage of my bow and my stabilizer then what I'll do is I'll take a snapshot of the finished product but first things first let's mount this back onto the bow and let's run a few shots in the backyard see what it looks like and then once everything's all said and done and here we've got my bow case it's not the most raddest in the worldest however it serves its purpose pretty well and I enjoy it but look, when you disassemble your bow to store it, your camera mount will fit right in there 
along with your stabilizer and whatever else you use. One thing that I like is that, as you can see, here's my bowstring. I can turn the camera 360 degrees without being bumped by the bow and without causing any great problems with the actual filming. Anyhow, let's go shoot this thing. All right, I got a block type target set up about 20 yards out. We're gonna go ahead and give it a run here and see how this works. Hmm, not great. It affected the focus pretty quickly there. That was a downside. It really affected the focus, but that might just be the camera. I'll have to try this with another camera mount here and we'll see it with another camera mounted. I'm gonna try this with a different camera. Older, much older power shot camera. Um, the reason I'm trying an older one is because I think that the older cameras, the technology may not be as sensitive to things like vibration because they're not as high quality. I know it sounds ridiculous, but we're gonna give it a try. Because I've made some minor modifications. Let's see if they have helped to improve this design. Let's take a look. Okay, now that we've dealt with the fabrication of the camera mount, now we're going to go ahead and cami it up. So I'm going to go ahead and take a light tan coat and kind of primer this thing. I already painted it black. I wasn't really thinking. I meant to do a lighter shade first. So let's go ahead and remedy that. Just do a couple of light bursts. You don't want to lay it on too heavy. What you want to do just got a nice even coat. Also, I put a nut on the end of the bolt for the camera because I didn't want to get any paint in the threads and cause any gumming. So you may want to consider doing that. Okay, so we got the main coat done. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a uh, heat gun, kind of speed up the process of drying. All right, the next thing I've done is I've cut some masking tape and the little patterns I can put on there for when I do my other coats. And then I came up with another idea. That idea is using this kind of mesh shelf liner and drawer liner stuff. I took a cut of that. And if you can see here, it's got some nice perforations. I'm actually gonna use that to coat this with a shading of a darker brown before I do any of my other patterns. Get a little a speckle pattern going. And since it's glossy, I'm not gonna use a lot of it. That's why I'm gonna do this mesh for the kind of the speckle pattern. Now you wanna hold the speckle right against what you're painting because if not, it'll bleed behind it and you won't like it. It'll, it'll just make a big blur. Just give it a dust in there. Then peel it away slowly. What you're left with is a pretty cool looking break in the patterns there. And now I'm going to use the other greens and, and black and brown above it. So you're not going to see a whole bunch of that like you're seeing now. Okay, so we got the finished product done. Let's see if I can get some video of that. Painted. It's ready to go. The only thing I really need to do is figure out which camera, what kind of camera I'm going to use. Right now that old power shot seems to withstand the vibrations pretty well. And this is just, this is actually a really fun project. Now like I said, I found, I have found these online ranging in price from $30 on up to, I think the most expensive one I saw was $85. This literally cost me $0.00. .00. Yes, 
I did have to buy these products, these items at one point in time, but these are actually all leftover stuff I had in the garage from other projects I've worked on around the house. So if I were to buy these raw materials individually, I think this would have cost me $7. It's important to note a couple of things. Number one, in your state, it may be illegal to hunt with any mounted electronic device. Some states have it against the law where you, can, you can't hunt with anything that it provides artificial light. And I believe that this here counts as artificial light, but I don't know. Like I said, it's all dependent upon your state. Another thing it's important to know, it's my understanding that if you are hunting and you get a buck that qualifies for Pope and Young, they won't count that buck on their records if you have a mounted camera. I could be wrong, but that is what I have been told. I have actually never read that. Hopefully this how-to video is worthwhile. It is the beginning of bow season here next week. And it is a good thing because I'm running out of food in the freezer. And it's hard to be paleo when you can't be paleo.